Um, nobody's speaking at the moment, Megan. Can you hear me now? That's kind of crazy. If you can't hear me, you probably can't answer me. Um, if, good. Um, sorry about my typing there. Um, on the phone. I think somebody turned on their webcam. Um, Cameron, if you can turn off your webcam, that would be good. We're going to go ahead and get started while I'm muting the people that just came in. Um, good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Um, thank you all for joining us. And I'm still picking up some. Okay. Hopefully. There we go. I hope. Um, if you folks aren't muted, just make sure you are muted, except for Emily and I, um, because it does pick up background noise and this is being recorded, so we want it to be as pristine as possible for those listening audiences around the world. Um, anyway, good morning and welcome to our webinar. We have a guest speaker this morning. Emily Bestard, and if I murdered your name wrong again, I apologize. <laughs> I can't remember anything for two seconds. Um, <laughs> that's because I'm old. But anyway, welcome to our webinar, and we will get started in just one second. Um, I wanted to let everybody know, just as a reminder, that we do have Friday Q&A sessions where you can come on and ask us anything about the program or just learn. You know, it's a great opportunity for you folks to um, get some answers to questions that are bothering you. There's, you know, all of us usually have things that we are thinking about and maybe we don't voice those. So it's a great opportunity. Somebody else might voice what exactly you were thinking of. So, um, and do contact us at any time. The program is a very hard program, and we would be lying if we said it was not. So it's normal to be frustrated. It's normal to get impatient. It's normal to feel all kinds of feelings, like throwing your computer out the window sometimes. Um, it is, uh, or it does get better just the more you do. So without any further explanations of all that, we'll get into that probably. Um, welcome, Emily, and take it away. We'll go ahead and listen to <laughs> Emily for a bit, and then we'll have questions at the end like we usually do. All righty. Well, hello, uh, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Perfect. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, so actually you didn't butcher my name that badly. My last name's actually pronounced Bestard, but uh, I've learned over time to answer uh, to however <laughs> it's pronounced. That being said, I do have to say 
um, as a business owner, I definitely, whenever in doubt, if I'm meeting a new physician or uh, a new clinic manager, etc., I always try to, uh, I will ask staff or ask someone um, how to properly pronounce their name, because sometimes people's name can be quite a stumbling block. But um, uh, yeah, so um, how long do I have to speak? I don't want to repeat myself too much or, or well, I'm we a generally- chatter. We go till about, I would say, at least, you know, till 20 till, and then start okay. taking questions. And you folks just type them in the window, and I'll read them to Emily as we we can. Perfect. Yeah, well, that's, that sounds good. Um, I don't have a problem talking, so I'll uh, I'll just talk away. I, I haven't, uh, I actually haven't listened to the, the last time I was able to, to do a webinar so I don't want to repeat myself, but just for people who have perhaps heard that, I'll just give a, a small bit of uh, background. So um, I had uh, decided to do the transcribe course. I guess it was back in 2004-ish, and I graduated in in 2005. Um, and I was had actually two or three different opportunities right after um, graduating. And at the time, hospitals were still, uh, the hospitals where I lived um, were still hiring in-house staff. So I was an in-house transcriptionist uh, full-time for for a, uh, a few years, and that's kind of how I got my original start. Uh, I did work uh, for some other uh, companies as well. It was a short time I had worked for, uh, it was called Ascentis at the time. I believe it's Nuance now. Um, but uh, so I did have some experience working um from home as well. Um, so eventually I was kind of, uh, I knew that the hospitals were going to be start to be outsourcing. So at the time I was just working part time uh, in an office and uh, I was at home. And basically kind of how I originally started was um, I had just been telling people I was a, a transcriptionist. There is still so many uh, offices and clinicians, um, specialist offices. So I had put my name out there and I mentioned, you know, if you ever need um, to one of the clinic managers, actually, I just said, oh, I do transcription. And I'd always had it in the back of my mind that um, it was something I just wanted to do uh, sort of on moonlighting, so to speak, uh, on the side for a bit of extra money. So I just started putting my name out there. To be honest, I didn't even really advertise per se. I had just done some research. So I looked up a different number of what they call TASPs, which are um, transcription application service providers. So I'm actually still with the same one I've been with from from the get-go. And uh, so they provide my toll-free dictation line. A large number of them actually uh, use digital recorders as well. They accommodate uh, both. Um, but so I obviously, and it's pay per use, and they are lovely because um, they're not, they don't require a contract from me. So there's no minimums. Uh, that's kind of what has given me my um, my website now. Up to this point, I haven't really felt the need because I've had business uh, coming to me that I haven't had to to go all out with a website or anything. But um, certainly, uh, you know, down the road they have that uh, capability as well if I if I want to kind of uh, expand more and advertise more. But um, so they kind of do that back end for me. So really all I need to focus on is the uh, transcription um, itself and just um, sort of uh, I'm doing the middleman. So obviously I started out doing the transcription myself uh, when I was a, a one-man band um, for a number of years. And then um, the great thing about um, you know, working hard, sticking to your tax. Uh, it kind of went from one position. And I have to say that um, with all my experience, even working, you know, in offices with physicians, they will always, always look for a recommendation um, from from each other. So their colleagues, they will, or they will go ask the uh, clinic manager. Uh, other clinic managers will, will they all, um, you know, everybody belongs to associations and they all network with one another. So, um, you know, I've been very blessed in the sense that I haven't had to go out. And once I kind of got my feet wet with a couple of physicians and was really um, uh, working hard for them, it, it, I wasn't needing to go out and be seeking. So um, at this point in time, 
I guess it was a few years. It was it was a lot of I wouldn't say slow growth, but it was consistent. Uh, but I eventually did get to the point that within the last few years, I just haven't been able to um, uh, work in a medical office and be home. I had to essentially choose and, and select. I was working at a hospital, and um, it was a difficult decision because uh, you know you it takes time as well to to get a, a certain position. But um, the transcription business just sort of felt like a child in that I had started it from nothing, and um, I was really happy with the the uh, flexibility it provided for me. Um, I, I didn't actually set out, to be honest. Like, you always think, oh, wouldn't it be great? But you don't. I was so focused on the day-to-day as far as keeping up with um, getting the work done and on time that I wasn't getting too far ahead of myself as far as growth. So I think that helped me um, me a great deal. Um, but, yeah, I did eventually have to, to make a decision about, okay, well, I don't have time to be outside the home, and, and this is now a full-time thing for me so uh, it uh, it felt like jumping off a cliff uh, let me say especially when you're in a, a job that you know there it feels a bit more secure and, and pensions and whatnot but um, uh, days like today where where I live in Canada it's minus 21 and I have not had to leave my home uh, you know stuff like that it's fantastic and I've uh, been able to run around my, my children to and from exams as necessary this past week and so I mean it's it's great lifestyle as far as that uh, that is concerned of kind of juggling you're able to kind of work around your own schedule um, I will very very quickly point out on my screen here um, I had this added this particular slide I had it added to the presentation just because this is something I do still teach um, teach transcription and some other medical office assistant programs at my local community college and I have not taught a class where I have not passed this particular slide on to people because I have to say as silly and as simple as these 10 points seem um, they are what has made my business come to me absolutely 100 percent so these are things that I strive for um, with every single client I have, and it is the reputation that I have maintained and which has brought me uh, opportunities, um, even to be honest, even my, um, my teaching uh, opportunity here locally, again, was, was a, a networking opportunity. So I didn't even, I didn't know about the position until it was, uh, came knocking on my door. So, um, and as I said, I'm, I have no special skills other than what I was trained by CanScribe to do. Um, but I really applied myself to um, working here. And I have to say, uh, energy, just going out and the simple act of me going and seeking out the time of some of these uh, clinic managers, it's wonderful because once they, you know, you work for them and with them, they very quickly say, oh, did you hear, you know, there's a new clinic opening up? Um, did you want me to pass on your name or, or do you want to call them or... Um, just obviously letting my my passion i i am not afraid of uh tooting my own horn in the sense that i'm like okay this is what i've done for this number of years you know um i will make sure that this is provided to you in this within this time frame um this is what i've been working at for the last you know almost 20 years now um there has been times like doing extra for instance number nine um if there's a stat um note sometimes because i get a my task actually will notify me right away if I get a stat note, I get a notification. So I will have one of the transcriptionists, like the stat is done within, you know, however long it, time, it takes. So I have that stat note dispatched within maybe five minutes of receiving the notification. So literally, you know, within the hour, um, and some of my clinics are affiliated with some of our acute care centers and um, sometimes those notes are people who presented in a clinic and are being sent to a hospital and they're trying to push um, some type of procedure through. So um, just basically having that type of service and then, you know, just getting that um, email back like, wow, thanks so much. Um, you know, it's, it's wonderful. So uh, thank you to Audrey for putting that slide together for me. I really think that, um, you know, attitude and um, preparation you know, putting yourself out there, uh, stuff necessarily doesn't fall in place right away, but, you know, it's all about sort of planting seeds, and at some point in time, you do sort of reap that harvest as far as, you know, um, 
you know, just being consistent and even, you know, six months later, just following up or um, networking is a huge skill that I've worked uh, hard on outside of when I've sort of evolved into like, I basically one day I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I don't have like a, a moonlighting situation here. I have a business, <laughs> so I better, I better be diligent here. And, um, you know, I've been gifted with something that I, I better actually apply myself to. So um, networking is quite, uh, quite an important aspect of things. Um, I, I have a few points here I do want to touch on just briefly. Um, account specifics. So when I was talking about, you know, kind of really uh, catering as far as like just stat notes, I think that there isn't someone, it's just like, you know, any time you go somewhere and you're being provided service, you want custom service. And so every single client I have, um, you know, over time, even when I just notify them, okay, I'll send them a quick email and I'll say, or, you know, if you guys are working for someone and you're unsure of something, just, just communicating with them and saying, okay, is there, if there is anything you'd like for me to do differently, um, please let me know. And so I really, uh, I really find that important because even within certain clinics, so I will have a, a whole clinic as a client who has a number of physicians. And I would say within say 15 physicians, seven or eight of them will want completely different things. So over time I have learned that, um, you know, this particular physician always dictates in the narrative. So his medications, he does not want uh, in a numbered list. Whereas almost, you know, 70% of the other physicians in that clinic, that's how they like. And the clinic manager assured me that they don't have a standardized format. It is, it is supposed to be catered to the specific physician. So even though it is, as I said, under the umbrella of the one clinic, um, they're allowed to dictate in their preferred style. So, um, you know, I will always mention to uh, anyone typing that particular physician, okay, this is, this is how he likes these ones done. Other ones, you know, and they will prompt you uh, in most cases, but some physicians, I find if they're list-heavy dictators, they'll tend to, to kind of do that throughout the document, whereas other ones prefer more of a paragraph format. So obviously that affects, like especially something like a medication list where you're having to, um, you know, make note of, okay, is this medication trade? Is it generic? Um, stuff like that. So uh, account specifics, other things like... Um, and they'll let you know, so definitely keep good notes. So I discovered very quickly, because I believe in the course, um, you guys are taught that like um, like ordinals, like you can use like second instead of spelling out the word second, like for second opinion. Um, you know, you can use the, the number two and then the ND or whatever. And um, I have some physicians, some clinics that are adamant, adamantly against that. They actually want, you know, um, first degree or, or uh, second opinion, they would always want certain words uh, spelled out in full. Um, and so I find I try to, with, my, with people uh, that I've hired for, for transcribing, I do try to have them consistent with the same physician. That's not always possible. You know, people are working contract and request time off or um, holidays and whatnot. But, um, you know, I do try to match people up. But sometimes that's not possible. So I I do have to be aware that, you know, so technically anyone could step in that, okay, well, this specific physician, this is the turnaround time for him. This is what he prefers to, to have done. Um, so that is extremely important. Now, some, some physicians, you know, uh, you just want to go verbatim. Some of them, uh, and some of them do have the expectation, to be honest. I have some English second language who uh, they're very kind. They do email and they say, you know, thank you for uh, taking the time to kind of um, clean up some of my sentences as far as the English is concerned, because some of them aren't as uh, fluent um, speakers. So I do, uh, when I take on a client, especially English second language, I will have a discussion, you know, do you want verbatim versus do you wish me to uh, sort of correct any English, like, uh, you know, if it's like um, verb subject agreement, that type of thing, do you want me to fix that? But that is something, again, that needs to be at the physician's discretion. So, um, and I do do that. Obviously, none of us will, will alter a sentence in any way to change medical meaning, but definitely um, that is a service that I, I definitely extend to uh, my English second language dictators just 
And so many of them are grateful because it takes the stress, you know, um, dictating is quite a task when you're trying to, to make um, sense out of notes that you've jotted down briefly. And then when it's not in your first language, I always greatly respect uh, the ESL physician. So if, if they do wish me to kind of clean up that, I will. Um, but certainly I always mentioned to physicians that really technically most of what we do is on a, a verbatim basis so to communicate with me what changes they um they like so that being said i did want to touch on the book of style as well because um the book of style uh, again should be a, a resource that we that we use and certainly that seems to be um my go-to as far as what i would point uh my transcriptionist towards that being said, uh, again, checking with clients because not everyone always um, likes that. And I know, for instance, over time they have changed certain, um, you know, certain things they've considered sort of dangerous abbreviations. So um, like Roman numerals, for instance, like di diabetes mell mellitus uh, used to be, uh, you know, the, the two Roman numerals and now we're using an Arabic two and things like that. Um, but it's interesting, I have a cardiologist who, even though, um, you know, some of the, the heart classes may be in Roman numerals, he doesn't want it in that. He prefers it. So there again, he has been specifically told me this is how I like this um, this written out. So, um, you know, if you're working or, or you acquire a position with somebody, just make sure that you're you're double checking. Most of them are very good about providing you with any account specifics but just always double check and with any with just like your course over time your course you get more familiar with using the platform um the dictation the style that a dictator may want or the formatting that you're you're required to use um it's the same with your accounts you just need to make sure that you're following the guidelines and eventually it becomes second second nature um, I just don't want people to get too so gung-ho because obviously when we're taking our examinations and things, yes, we use Book of Style, but um, I find that it's more of a U.S.-based modality and it doesn't necessarily always reflect um, some of our uh, Canadian uh, clinics and such. For instance, I always ask, um, you know, all of my typists to uh, use Canadian spelling since we're in Canada, so to, for tumor color, etc. We, we would use the, the U in that circumstance just because that's how we spell, unless the physician um, uh, mandates otherwise. We always use the Canadian spelling of things. Even though uh, words may underline our words and tell us we're wrong, uh, I just, I, I moved past that and I've just added it to my dictionary that that's how I want stuff, um, stuff spelled. So um, basically the key that I'm looking for is in a transcription is just um, researching accurately um obviously just double checking knowing your resources like being um like here in in, um, in ontario so obviously you know we're looking at the college of physicians and surgeons here for ontario um wherever you are locally looking up your provincial website as far as who the providers are um eventually over time i could rattle on a large number of specialists and uh gps in my local area because i'm so used to seeing them but um, just getting used to your account, um, spending the time to know where your main resources are. So when I, I immediately have my whole desktop full of, okay, you know, my, my favorites are here of, okay, here's my CPSO. Um, this is my favorite website for looking up um, drugs. Um, for instance, I've always used like just drugs.com. That's been my favorite when I need to decipher. I do have to say sometimes I see some inconsistency with people with the trade and generic um, drugs. I think just because sometimes if you just do a quick Google uh, search, you really have to use close discernment, obviously, anytime we're on the Internet. That goes, you know, with our uh, uh, transcription environment and beyond. Just you're going to get hits and you're going to see papers and journals and Wikipedia, anything. Um, sometimes the drugs can just be starting a sentence, so they're capitalized, but they're not you know, necessarily the true uh, braid or trans, uh, or excuse me, the trade or brand name. So um, just making sure that you're in a reputable website or specifically, um, you know, a pharmaceutical website that would be telling you, okay, yes, this is indeed the correct, this is what I'm looking for. Um, and just keeping, keeping notes. I actually, in my early days, I had um, what looked like just a, like a telephone book with the 
the alpha tabs on the side. And so I just eventually over time, I just made a, myself a huge like hand. Um, I, I'm old school, so I shouldn't, uh, shouldn't call myself old, but I liked to have a handwritten hard copy reference on my desk. Um, but of course, over time as well, I do have electronic resources um, that I use as well. So it's just whatever people's preferences. I just know I would always like to just even the, the, the physical act of writing down the drugs and stuff, just creating that, <laughs> that neural pathway for myself and putting it in my brain. Um, I'm very much still uh, like things handwritten. So I do have the dual uh, resources, um, which helps. But, um, you know, having stuff electronically that you can just look up um, quickly really helps. So uh, it's so important over time, because especially if you get assigned or you're working for one company, um, you're definitely going to be having a repetition. So whatever way is your favorite way to just to keep track of things, um, you know, even if it's instructions for the platform, sometimes it can be frustrating when you've gone through and you've trained someone on a, on a platform and um, you've walked them through the steps. I actually, ironically, just today I was being um, shown a new uh, EMR modality. And after I got off the phone with the gentleman, I went through the steps again without just completely cleaning it, cleaning, clicking through it to finish. Um, I wrote it down so that if I somehow something happens or crashes, um, I know exactly what steps to do, so I can do that myself without having to take someone's time. Not to say people aren't willing to help. That's not what I'm trying to say. It's just I like myself to try to sh troubleshoot as much as humanly possible before I have to, um, you know, go back and uh, uh, have someone help me through things. And I like to know um, sort of how my system or my platform works to try to to get where I need to, to be. Um, so... Basically, that's kind of what I wanted to touch on when when um, when I was in the course. I kind of wish I had taken a few more few more notes and kind of researched. So just kind of being prepared for when I, I was kind of stumbling when I first graduated. And yes, I did have lots of opportunities. And I think, to be honest. Uh, mind you, this was a number of years ago, and, and the CanScribe forum at the time was a great resource to me, but I know there's a lot more um, a lot more uh, things online now for, um, I even just recently myself joined um, a, Facebook, uh, a Facebook group where I see a lot of MTs online together, but um, it's wonderful to, to network with each other and, uh, you know, who's hiring, who's this, so um, for all I wasn't really, it didn't take me long to find work. I kind of wish I'd, I'd had a bit of more of a game plan um, when I first graduated um, as far as, okay, having just done a bit more research, okay, uh, you know, just communicating with other transcriptionists, okay, what's the, perhaps the schedule with this, what's their platform like, and, I, and I'm very encouraged that I do see people when I am online looking at that, uh, doing that, because certainly that um, it helps to answer questions. And before you put a, in a really big time investment of, you know, testing for a company and, and then maybe finding out it's not a good fit, just um, being prepared. And then obviously feeling really comfortable in my skin as an MT, um, knowing I, I know my business. And certainly there's nothing wrong with goal setting if you know that you've had a favorite um, specialty or uh, you want to target uh, specific physicians or groups. Like I've kind of fallen into my main chunk of business is I do a lot of neurology, I do a lot of cardiology, um, and, and then, of course, the, the references for further work in those fields snowballs because, I mean, they all communicate with one another. But, um, you know, I, I do have other specialties um, other than those as well. But I, I find that um, that was kind of where my interest, uh, my initial interest was, and that just happened to be uh, a clinic that I was affiliated with in the early days when I was out um, working. So that's kind of how I've gotten into those. But um, set goals for yourself. You know, um, I, my original goal, um, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't um, to, to be where I am now. I'm so grateful I am. But I think if I'd looked, who is it? I think it's Martin Luther King had said something about, you know, don't, um, forgive me, I'm misquoting him, but just the, the idea of don't look at the whole staircase, just take the first step. And really, that's what I did. I just kind of thought, wouldn't it be nice to have a bit of, um, uh, typing for my for myself where I could control a bit more of the of my schedule and so um, I pursued that and I 
pursued that with with energy and passion and um i just was consistently you know not harassing anyone but um just making sure i was putting my name forward and i even had said at one point you know if you need backup because at the time one of the first clinics that i had actually had someone um ha- actually had someone already doing a lot of their work and so eventually as their she said oh you know i have someone working for me but um i do find sometimes i get some extra and then you never know who's going to expand. And so over time, this clinic has grown. And so I ended up just doing overflow. And then this person, particular person, after a while, they retired. It was never about taking this person's job at all. It was literally just about providing support, um, checking out other avenues of business in the interim, which which worked out well. Um, but then eventually over time, um, you know, that person, they were moving on to something else. And um, then I was able to to pick up the and and I was prepared to do so and it was great because what they loved about it is I was already familiar with the platform and already performing some of their transcriptions so I just literally it was seamless so that was fantastic and you can do that with a number if you have your hands in a few different pots um, and certainly don't forget too if you're if you're typing for some of these other um, other transcription companies that um, you know you can work full time for one or I don't know um, I haven't um, been out in that for a while but I'm not sure if you're still able to kind of work for more than one or or how they allow that as far as juggling but um you know it it never hurts to kind of have your your name out in in a couple places um a couple places as well so um uh, I just wanted to as well offer a word of encouragement I see him down to my last few minutes uh here I told you I was a chatty one um uh I I wanted to encourage people there was times where I remember in the can scribe course and I was so frustrated I was so stressed out before my final uh, examination um, I did definitely feel like throwing in the towel a couple times it felt like it was never going to end I felt like my brain was going to explode um, there was a few times where um You know, you're typing, especially when you get a really, some of those really, you get into some of those challenging uh, dictations. Um, I would do one, and then sometimes you just need a fiber. I would just be like, you know what? I need a fiber right now because I'm going to lose my mind. So, um, yeah, that's when you would just, I would just go get myself a coffee, or I would just go out and take a walk, or, you know. And I have to say that is goes the same for the working world. There are some days where, you know, you get stressed and... Um, you just need for your mental health sometimes to just get up for a few minutes and take a break and then, uh, you know, do something mindless. Sometimes, to be honest, sometimes I've even just gone and, you know, read a chapter of a book or, and that's not always possible, but sometimes, you know, if I can, I'll just take myself away from my computer for a few minutes and then I feel refreshed and I'm able to, okay, I'm ready. I'm prepared to, to mentally deal with this right now. Um, but definitely I do remember, even though it was many moons ago, I do remember the, the course, uh, very well. And I do remember that, um, reminding myself that it's a marathon, not a sprint. And that kind of helped me that, um, you know, over time, okay, well, I'm almost done. I'm at the halfway mark. I'm, I'm getting there. Um, and just keeping, keeping that finish line in sight. Uh, there's days that that's easier than others, but, it's so great to, to go online and see other people encouraging um, one another because sometimes you do, like I said, in, in sort of using the metaphor of a race, sometimes just having that person on the sidelines to help cheer you on. Um, definitely well worth it. I owe, you know, I to be honest, I wouldn't take the time to do the, uh, the webinars if I wasn't so extremely grateful to to Canscribe and I'm actually a community uh, I graduated college as well and I do have to say that um, I'm far more utilizing my Canscribe um, sort of credentialing than I am my other college although that's good to have I'm not not saying anything bad about you know college or university by any means but um, for me uh, right now you know teaching transcription uh, locally and um certainly as from my business perspective. So I owe 100% of my, my business and income completely to having completed this course and then choosing um, to, to go with it and to see where it would take me. And it's, 
like I said, stuff doesn't fall into your lap necessarily, uh, you know, right off the bat, but doing that initial leg work um, and it's the consistency over time. And once that business started rolling in, um, giving it my 110% every day, there's some days where I'm so stressed. For instance, um, I sometimes as bad as I feel, I'm so glad that they do still have it up on the on the board, the, the business, and I do get resumes um, from students, which I am so grateful to have. Some days I get um, such an inflow of email that uh, I don't always have time. I have kept every single resume uh, and have them filed um, that I've ever received. I, I'm never intending to be rude, and I do answer when I, when I can, but just on a daily basis between the number of clinics and then, of course, obviously communicating with um, with some of my transcriptionists and then you know as I said I do kind of teach outside of the home and then I have three kids <laughs> so I don't ever ever intend not to to be open and receptive or answer people but um uh, the my inbox is voluminous some days and um so I do always keep though and I do try to go in sequential order of when I've received things when I do do need people so um definitely I think I believe, to be honest, everyone who, uh, yeah, everyone who works for me is a CAMSCI graduate. First place I go, first place that I get um, for, uh, you know, I definitely wouldn't um, hire someone. And to be perfectly honest, I am teaching transcription as part uh, of a community college uh, medical office assistant program. But if people have an affinity for transcription or um, sh express an interest in it, I always, always tell them, that they need to go take the CAM scribe because to be, in my humble opinion, to be uh, industry ready, um, CAM scribe will well equip you because literally you can just start transcribing. Um, and as I said, I have some students that I just teach as part of this program where they, you know, they, they might be good, but you definitely need, like they put you through the ropes, but it is for good reason um, because there is many challenges and some dictators are certainly more challenging than others and some clinics can um, you know have demands of us and um, the quality is there it's literally you guys I can just take somebody and boom and I don't stress for one minute because you can imagine the volume I have I can't always take the time um, to be proofreading uh, as much as I'd like so now some clients I do have that sort of dictated not proofread um, to expedite delivery uh, disclaimer um, because some physicians as well I know don't always proofread um, but that being said oh thank you Lisa I just my eye just caught your comments about marathon not a sprint so I'm so glad that's helpful for you that's helpful sometimes just to get through my day <laughs> that's helpful to me but um, the last thing I wanted to mention, I was just talking about loving my CAMScribe graduates for, for applicants just because I don't stress about having to, to proofread. Um, that being said, it doesn't hurt, lastly, to um, take that extra few seconds to proofread. And the reason being, I love how CAMScribe, and as I'm, gonna, I'm going to do a bit of a walk of shame at the moment because I want to make a confession, which I have confessed to my other students. There was a couple times where when I was a full-time transcriptionist in the hospital eight hours a day that I would find it becomes such second nature to us that, and the brain is such an amazing, amazing thing that I would, could literally be typing and flowing and going with the flow. And then I'd catch myself like planning my dinner that night or, and I'd, I'd kind of shake my head and say, okay, well, concentrate, concentrate. And then I would go back and read what I just typed. And so I would be like, it phonetically made sense, but I'm just going to give you an example. So I just did a spot check the other day where, where someone, and again, it, there's no judgment here. It's easily done. But someone had just said, you know, the patient was seen in clinic two day and two day was two separate words. It was two and day, which as I just said, phonetically isn't incorrect, but uh, obviously that's someone totally in the zone, um, heading off you know, just doing their thing, which is awesome. It wasn't incorrect in the sense of that's what they heard, but it's incorrect in the sense when we go back and we're editing for clarity and, and proofreading for our accuracy, it's incorrect. And so those are the things that I really need to, um, you know, make sure people are going back uh, to double check. Absolutely. Because sometimes they don't always get that second scan and, 
you know, we just need to make sure, even if it's just a cursory glance to go through stuff before you are submitting it or, you know, um, sending things off. Um, I think everybody knows kind of what I'm talking about, that sometimes you can get in a, in a bit of a groove and then, um, but our brain does have to kind of scan stuff again after just to, um, uh, just to, to proofread it. So, um, so that was basically my main points was just making sure um, your account specifics are correct. Um, anyone on the fence near graduating about credentialing, credentialing certainly um, I don't want to say that I, I wouldn't hold it against anyone. I, I actually kind of have uh, myself uh, across the board. I, I don't not hire someone that they, they don't have, um, you know, their CHDS or anything. But that being said, I, it's not going to hurt if, if you're debating uh, doing that. I certainly you know, would recommend um, doing that extra step. It, it, it's something that looks great on your CV. Um, and uh, it's, it's just, it's kind of another uh, checkpoint as far as building confidence and, and everything like that. So as I said, I don't want to, anyone to, to misunderstand me that that would preclude you, but anyone who might think that um, that might be beneficial to them. Absolutely, I could certainly say it would be uh, as far as, you know, putting yourself forward um, to some of the, the companies or even if you were wanting to, you know, work for me or for, for anyone else, it, um, it certainly doesn't um, certainly doesn't hurt in any way. So, uh, oh my goodness, I'm long-winded. So oh, I, I'm happy. Fine. To... You're fine. You're fine. I, I, it's so funny because you're saying, oh, how am I going to fill 40 minutes? And then you, and you, just, start, <laughs> you just start talking. Yeah, so, you're like me. Um, it works. But everything you said, I completely agree with. Um, I was, as something came to mind when you were talking about the today example, and I have found that with, <clears throat> excuse me, spell check, or not spell checkers, but expanders, because you're so used to hitting certain keys and just that momentary blip where you didn't see what just got printed on there, it could just mean the difference in a tense, but it's the wrong word. So it is really, it's so easy to have your mind just click off for a split second and you can make a mistake. Uh, absolutely. And definitely with the, um, uh, with the, uh, the word expanders. Yeah. You, you have to be careful because, um, making sure, I mean, obviously word expanders, usually you have inputted something, but sometimes it's the words around. And to be honest, I, I, I have to say it's not the medications. It's not mm -hmm. the, uh, the medical terminology. It is the conjunctions. It is like, the, little the stuff words. that yeah. it's the little words that we don't tend um, to enter um, into any type of expander or autocorrect, for instance, that sometimes our fingers just slip. Um, and I find it's interesting when I teach my course, I find if you don't have a template you're working from, and some of them actually are, are working in Word documents and they're just typing their headings, it's interesting how people will blast on past. Um, uh, a heading and not proofread a heading. Mm -hmm. So like, for instance, I found one the other day where uh, the word um, physical was just missing the, the H in it. And they hadn't proofread that. Um, they hadn't proofread that part uh, of the document. So they didn't even catch that the physical examination um, part was wrong. Mm -hmm. um, so I just saw a little thing there. Someone just wondering uh, about CHDS. Um, I'll just touch on that really quickly. You're welcome to go look at, at the um, ahdionline.org, or I don't know if you have a different link, uh, Audrey, through Transcribe, but um, that's just the, um, the Certified Healthcare Documentation Specialist. So it, they offer an examination. Um, I'm sure, Audrey, it sounds like she's clicking away there and, and can offer some more information. <laughs> um, but they just have an examination that you can take, and I believe it's valid for about three years or so. Right. Um, yeah. But you do have to be an RHDS uh, first. Yes, first. Yes, yes. And yes. You're, you can take that at any time. And I always encourage my students when they're finished with their practicum, especially yes. while you're, the course is fresh in your mind, um, just because Canscribe's course is so difficult and so thorough, 
um, our students pass that with flying colors. So you just sit for that. You can do it in person or you can do it online. They also have study groups. Um, but as I say, our students seem to do really, really well on it. Um, and then you become an RHDS, which is the registered. And then after two years of specialty, um, if you went into orthopedics or neurology or whatever, then after you, or even acute care, you'd be doing all kinds of stuff. But then after the two-year period, you can sit for the CHDS, which means you're a certified healthcare documentation specialist. And right. with that, you do have a three-year cycle, but during that cycle, you have to have continuing education, which amounts to 30, um, about 30 units or 30 things that you are going to continue your education with. And many of them are on the HDI website, or you can attend webinars through HDI or different ones that are uh, allowable, and it, it's a good thing. And that's what I do because it keeps me always honest. That's, I guess, how I feel about it. It's like it's never over. You can never be in our job and think that you've learned everything. Because Oh, never. Yeah. It's always never. going to be new every day. Yeah. So yeah. I love especially, it. especially with some... Um, you know, pharmacologically and, mm -hmm. oh, heavens, definitely, definitely. Procedures, everything. Yeah. 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 Um, I was just going to mention, Audrey, I uh, thank you, everyone, for their nice, um, lovely comments. I was just taking a quick glance, and um, I, I see Emily had mentioned here about the hard uh, copy drug book. So I just wanted to, to expand one little bit further on that. So for anyone interested, um, I know some people are, are definitely into their electronic resources, but with my, um, so I, as I said, I got like a telephone book with the the uh, alphanumeric tabs and so uh just to let you know on the inside what i did was if i had like a uh the trade name i did put them in capitals i ended up doing in both so when i entered a trade name in brackets i would put the generic and vice versa so if i have a drug that i'm not familiar with i always i you know i over time i added them but i always would would put um the equivalent um for either or and i always would had the one in, in the brackets and then the, and the one not. So just to, just a head up. And that thing has been amazing. Um, I think I will cry if I ever lose it because it's well loved by this point in time. Uh, yeah. And I mean, obviously it was a work in progress, um, you know, but I, I do, I'm quite certain there are some people who, who just like something on their desk. And sometimes to be honest, I just get in the groove and I just don't want to go off of the screen I'm on and I don't, or I don't want to have to be searching something up on the internet. It's just handy. I have the book there and I've worked on it over a number of years and, um, yeah, it's just right on my desk and it, it's, it's right there for me. So that was, um, that was a, a good thing. So, well, and the, um, and yeah, I hope, I, you mentioned that you know it commits it to memory because you wrote it down and I think that or you typed it and I spoke with somebody one time and I don't know where they they came up with the number but to type it out would help you remember it probably 20% yes. more if you yep. wrote it out you might increase that to 40% more just because of the amount of time that your brain is focusing on that well, and the reason the reason being is because you're 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 creating the neural pathway. So your brain actually has to register what you're like take the information in. So you're registering and you're remembering, but you're actually your brain is using motor skills with your hand and writing. So the reason why as much as my teenage boys roll their eyes at me when I tell them to study mm -hmm. There is a reason why writing things out by hand, um, it just, it's, it's a double whammy for the brain to create a neural pathway. So that's where, because you actually have to physically, and then you're visually seeing yourself writing exactly. something out. Yeah. So, yes, yes. So, and I just see, sorry, Cassidy, we were talking about a hard copy, copy drug book. It's not, it's not something I, I got. It's something that I created over time. So I was just saying I bought like a, like a telephone book that has the, the alphabet for tabs. And I have created it myself over time, just entering drugs under the, the alphabet tab. So I just wanted to answer her quick um, Oh, I was uh, going to just ask you about that. that. Cool. And yeah. Amanda wants to know if you also add the dosages, which would be 
you know, up to you? Um, for some of them, for some of them, I did. Now, certainly, I have found myself, like I mentioned, I have a lot of uh, different specialties. So over time for my specialties, I definitely have. I'm glad you brought that up, Amanda, because there's sometimes a doctor um, has, you know, accidentally given me a wrong, uh, a wrong dosage and or if it's outside of what I know to be the norm. Um, yes, that would definitely, definitely be helpful. That is a very common, um, uh, that's a, a very um, common thing that the physicians will kind of mess up because they're going through notes or referral letters. Um, and sometimes as well, uh, just recently, actually, I had a doctor um, dictate a medication list with venlafaxine and he did it twice and it was two different uh, two different dosages. And certainly I have access to that medical, that EMR, where I can go look it up. But that there again would not be a circumstance where I can, I can make that call because I just took a quick glance and I could see there's been times where that medication had been raised and lowered for whatever reason over a period of time. So that's not for me to decipher. I'm not a physician, um, which one he meant. So, and he did not state later in the document whether you know, he didn't reiterate. So I had to flag that for him. Um, you know, which, which of these dosages, um, uh, did you, did you mean? So, and they really um, appreciate that. I get yeah. oh. all the time. Yeah. It's like, Absolutely. And I have to say the one, the greatest accolade I ever did get was I got an email back from a physician where, uh, he did just that. I had flagged something cause I just said, Oh, you know, the dictation clearly states, you know, this number, um, I'm just wondering if that's what you intended for this particular medication. And he wrote me back and he said, this is exactly why I've hired you. Thank you so oh. much. Um, blah, 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 blah. So there again, that goes back to our slide, though, of doing that little extra. So something mm -hmm. like having your resources ready, um, that's a great idea of, as far as having uh, dosages. And if you're willing to take the time as you're entering them uh, into any type of, of reference you're using, um, definitely all that type of stuff will serve you well. And really knowing, especially sometimes we tend to get stuck in one area of medicine or not stuck, but we tend to get, um, you know, placed in one and that's kind of where we go. Really uh, research and know, knowing blood, um, blood labs, this is one good thing. I'm glad this came up. Knowing so many people um, don't enjoy typing out blood labs, um, but when you do have to, knowing what would be, you know, oh gosh, that hematocrit shouldn't be, you know, say they say hematocrit 224 and they don't mean 224, they mean 2, like T-O-24, like the patient's, you know, the, me the hematocrit was measured 224. I've actually had this happen before and it was meant to be T-O-24. So knowing that the hematocrit shouldn't be 224 is going to serve you well. So I, I hope that kind of just gives you uh, a bit of an example. And it, when in doubt, you need to look that type of thing up. Flag it or flag yeah. it. And the other and thing, fl yeah. if you don't know th what the normals are, so if they flip like the sodium and the potassium, if you don't yeah. have a clue what those are and you would just blindly type it in, I mean, probably somebody's going to notice that and say, oh, that's just a flip, and he dictated it incorrectly. But that's part of our job is that we are paying attention, and we're going to note that for them. Or if we have permission, we're going to fix that. Right. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, oh, I will mention... Um, Someone's here. You mentioned a company that didn't require a contract. So if someone was um, interested in looking up the, like um, I saw Audrey had typed out the TAS, the, the Transcription Application, uh, application Service Provider, um, I use one called um, Metroscript. It's actually um, uh, based out of the U.S., but they do uh, have very reasonable um, pricing for me in Canada. Um, and I haven't had any problems with them. They've been wonderful in every way, and they do not uh, require a contract or a minimum. So if anyone was looking um, for um, an original, uh, or sorry, a TASP um, that wouldn't sort of be roping them in uh, if they wanted to try to get a, a client, um, certainly that's one to one of many. I'm sure there's many more. I did not have the selection that I had years ago, and and um, they've been great to me and for me, so I, I haven't um, switched. But I'm sure there's many more players in the field um, as well. So um, be certain that's, again, something that you can do some research and look up. And um, But I just know they were great for, for getting my feet wet. And uh, they've been able to, to grow with me. So it's been, um, it's been fantastic. So, and I um, do think your point, you know, about... Um, 
if you do a really good job, and my experience was pretty much the same. I worked at a hospital, and I just wanted to be available for my kids' games and things when yeah. they were getting older. So I did. I just put out the word, you know, if you have any private office dictation you want me to do, blah, blah, blah. And before I knew it, I had hospitals and clinics and and it was coming out my ears and yeah. the thing was that I had to be honest about it um, some nights I had to work till midnight I won't kid about that and it was overwhelming but and then I just like you I started to hire people yeah but I would just be honest and when folks called me which that's what happens word of mouth yeah. and I yeah. would just say yes I really 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 want to do that and but I would just make sure that I was honest you know that I'm taking you on and I do have an adjustment period here where we you know kind of check it out how much you have how much we can do at a time and just build on that and you yeah. know it just was it was the most wonderful business I could ever have imagined and like you you just turned around one day and go oh my gosh how did this happen <laughs> this isn't a hobby yeah <laughs> it's Extra. Just, yeah, this just is an extra, but definitely, uh, Audrey, not, you know, make sure you stick to those turnaround times that you are specifying exactly. um, and don't make promises you can't keep. So, right. and it's great to have that little disclaimer, especially when you're bringing on someone new, but um, sure. sort of just as a last, last word of encouragement, um, thankfully we're, you know, we're in the field of medicine. It's, it's recession proof in the sense that, you know, um, you know, we have an aging population demographic and there's lots and lots of clinics and like cl I see clinics going up everywhere and there's so much opportunity. There's going to, you know, the hospitals are, are outsourcing to these other companies. There's lots of um, potential. Uh, and uh, I know sometimes in this particular field of work um it can be discouraging because especially sometimes on the forums you know we not we got to keep that good momentum of positive um encouragement because uh you know yes speech recognition is out there and yes um you know the technology is changing and stuff but as it stands right now we still need um you know the human brain to be going over this information uh, monitoring getting stuff out there and i have so i have plenty of business of physicians who who are, are willing to um you know pay to have a quality product on time uh, you know and it's it's professionally done uh, and they don't have to stress about it so uh there is business opportunities and work opportunities out there um you know just um keep keep at it and and finish the course and then really just um get your your mind around putting yourself out there and and working hard and things will line up and like i said the advantage of of being home and in, in in my nice warm toasty house on a day like today uh it's wonderful and it, it doesn't for one second um i've never had any any regrets and i'm so so grateful to to Canscribe. I can't honestly thank them enough. I love them. I, I even will say, you know, if you need me to ever do a webinar, Audrey, please call me for a <laughs> webinar. <laughs> I love, I love to uh, uh, encourage people. So, and I know I at times could have used the, the encouragement myself. So just hang in there, everybody and uh, stuff, you know, work and opportunity is, is waiting out there for you. Definitely. I totally agree. And, you know, um, decades ago, people kept telling my husband and I, because we got so big that he actually quit his job. And back then we did tapes. And so yes, he yes. drove like 200 miles a day picking up tapes. Oh, good heavens. So, yeah, a meeting transcriptionist. And then we would electronically eventually send it all back. But yes, yes. it was just gigantic for us. And they kept saying, though, that, you know, speech rec is going to wipe you right out. And yeah. oh, I we were worried. Thing. We were, but here we are. We're still, you know, still doing this. So if anything, I think the technologies work to my advantage because now exactly. this thing's digital. Yeah. I, like the world's my oyster as far as the the ease of um exactly. you know obviously i have my uh my work queue and my platform where stuff can be sent uh, encrypted and it's uh privacy but um it's fantastic it's just it's just digital files so uh, i know it's wonderful 
and I'm just yeah. glad we didn't walk away. Um, somebody was asking a question, Jenna, about starting off with a local company or one of the bigger companies. Um, gosh, golly, I have to say personally, I would go local um, just because that gets you really familiar with your local area. So if you start off with a local uh, company, you're going to, like I said, you get really familiar with basically every physician in and around where you are um, just because you're going to be CCing them. Uh, you're going to get really familiar with what offices, what clinics. And then over time, um, not that you're, and I'm not promoting, obviously, cutting or taking anyone's business, but um, I, I think that knowing your local area, should you ever, you know, do want to put your, your name out there for, for people you hear up and coming, it just, it's just a networking thing. You could also potentially through that business network with other MTs in the area, um, but certainly the other companies um, aren't. Uh, you know, that's not bad either. I just know myself, I like knowing, you know, when someone says a copy to go to such and such street clinic, or for instance, I know maybe there, someone's being referred from like, I'm trying to think of some communities in Alberta off the top of my head, like Olds, or, you know, it, I just find with an account where you're familiar with the local area, um, if they say, oh, this patient lives in Rocky Mountain House or something like that, um, forgive me, I don't know very <laughs> many cities in Alberta, but um, you obviously, it's, it just saved you that extra step of researching, right? So um, right. You, you just, it's just kind of helpful, but um, definitely, you know, th th cast your net though as well, right? It, it doesn't, certainly That's doesn't right. um, hurt to apply and just see, see where the chips fall. And because uh, both of them, to be honest, would be beneficial really at the, at the end of the day. But sometimes there's advantages to, to just knowing your local area and physicians. And I do think you end up where you're supposed to be. That's oh, absolutely. Just my belief. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. You always have to keep faith that you know. And even right. if things don't fall in place right away, mm -hmm. it will they because will. the need the need is there. Um, sure. You know, all of these patients being seen across the country uh, and beyond uh, in across the world. You know, people as we said were aging and they're they're mm -hmm. they're needing you know, they're needing medical care and that all needs to be processed. And so there is lots of work to get along. And sometimes if the first one you apply to doesn't work out, that's because the next one was the one meant for you. So you just kind of have to keep positive. And uh, I don't want to make it sound like everything's on my lap because by all means, it, it was a lot of, uh, it wasn't an overnight thing. It was a lot of legwork and, and research, as I said, finding that the right task for me and and trying to fit all the pieces together but eventually over time um once i got the gears all slowly turning then over time it's we're we're i'd like to think a well-oiled machine that's right <laughs> not every not every day but certainly yeah it's uh things will flow as they should and and you'll get uh, you'll get to where you need to be yep and things do change but thank you so much for coming again and i'll call you again <laughs> oh wonderful anytime and and good luck everyone thank, thank you so you much so much and thank you all for coming have a great day yeah. all right bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.